Hello, my name is Murilo and in this video I'll present to you a work entitled Fault Prognostics of Rolling Bearings Using a Hybrid Approach. This is the presentation outline. In the introduction, I'll talk about the motivation of this work and some definitions about prognostics. Then, I'll present the proposed degradation model and how it can be used in a nonlinear Bayesian state estimation framework, the particle filters. I'll show an application of this model to a real testbed of rolling bearings, and finally, I'll draw the work's conclusions. To give you some motivation, I'll start with a general objective of improving reliability and safety for critical systems using condition-based maintenance. The reason to do that becomes evident in this graph, where the total maintenance cost is shown as a function of the number of failure events. Here, condition-based maintenance policies manage to get the best cost-benefit by optimizing the necessity of replacements required to keep the plant running. The earliest maintenance policy consists of unplanned repair actions after a breakdown. This can be quite costly in terms of unnecessary downtime and component faults that can propagate to the entire system. That's when preventive maintenance actions rise. Components are replaced periodically, and this can also increase the total cost of maintenance if they are replaced without necessity. Condition-based maintenance tries to reduce unexpected downtime and unnecessary replacements at the same time. Techniques for maintenance decision support in condition-based maintenance programs are divided into two main categories, diagnostics and prognostics. Prognostics attempts to predict faults or failures before they occur, saving extra unplanned maintenance costs. In this sense, prognostics is superior to diagnostics, but it cannot completely replace diagnostics since there are always some faults and failures which are not predictable. And in this work, we'll focus on prognostics and health management systems to achieve condition-based maintenance. These prognostics techniques are often classified into physics-based and data-driven, and both have their pros and cons. The physics-based approaches rely on first principles models and physics of failure. They are in general more accurate than data-driven techniques and tend to require less training data. The data-driven, on the other hand, uses run-to-failure experimental data to train its models. It also offers more flexibility to be reused in different components or systems and can be cheaper to develop. Two common examples of physics-based models are the Paris-Erdogan model, widely used for correct propagation, and simplified exponential models to represent the increase of the internal impedance of lithium-ion batteries. The data-driven are generally divided into statistical and artificial intelligent methods. Wiener and gamma processes, along with neural networks, are common data-driven examples. A common practice in prognostics algorithms is to fuse sensor data to create single health indices that can facilitate both process and analysis. They are generally nonlinear and should show clear trends. This trendability can be measured through its correlation with the time index. With these features in mind, we propose this generic degradation model that can convey both nonlinear information and time dependency. The model's parameters will be estimated from data using the proposed nonlinear degradation model. This is done by minimizing the sum of weighted squares of residuals, where capital X is the entire training dataset, uh, capital X hat represents the values estimated using the proposed degradation model, and W is the weight and matrix composed by measurement errors. We can use the levenberg marquardt algorithm to do that. This algorithm is an interpolation between the Gauss-Newton algorithm and the known gradient descent method. It starts by favoring gradient descent increments, and as the solution approaches a local minimum, the algorithm uses uh, Gauss-Newton increments. When we use the levenberg marquardt algorithm, it is possible to compute the covariance matrix of the model's parameters. Then, it is possible to use it as a way to quantify the uncertainty related to the model construction for prognostics applications. Here we use a particle filter to carry the system states in a long-term prediction, allowing us to estimate the uncertainty in such predictions. 
The particle filter uses a set of samples to estimate the posterior distribution of the system states. The general formulation of particle filters can take state space models such as this one, where x is the system state, y are measurements, f is the state transition function, h is the measurement function, and w and v are process and measurement noises. And in this work, we use the proposed degradation model as a transition function. We also assume the model states can be measured with some noise. The exact Bayesian solution to the posterior distribution can be analytically computed as shown in this equation. To solve the equation, it is necessary to compute the normalizing constant in red, which can be very challenging in most contexts. This is because the integrals that need to be solved become very complex and high dimensional in nonlinear and non-Gaussian scenarios. Particle filters are used to overcome this difficulty. It approximates the posterior distribution using the finite set of samples from the system state. These particles are weighted by the likelihoods of the observations. The weights are given as the rescaled likelihoods. Then, the posterior distribution can be approximated as the weighted average of the particles. As n tends to infinity, the approximation tends to the true value. In this work, the posterior distribution is chosen as a Gaussian density function, where the mean parameter is given as the proposed degradation model. Both the model's parameters and the likelihood variance are plugged into the particle filter as system states. To show how the proposed model can be used in prognostics, we apply to the Pronostia platform. This platform consists of some run-to-failure experiments under three different load and speed operating conditions. For each operating condition, two trained datasets are provided. For conditions 1 and 2, there are five test datasets, and for condition 3, only one dataset for testing is provided. The test bed has three parts a rotating part, a degradation generation part, and a measurements part. The first part is composed by an asynchronous motor that allows the bearing to rotate through a system of gearing and different couplings. The second part is composed by a pneumatic jack applying a radial force to reduce the bearing's life duration. The third and last part is set up to obtain instantaneous measurements from the radial force applied on the bearing, the rotation speed of the shaft handling the bearing, and the torque inflicted to the bearing. The experiments were designed to be a benchmark for new out-of-the-box solutions. Nothing is informed about the fault's origin and nature, and the standard techniques on bearing analysis do not yield good results. In order to apply the proposed degradation model to Pronostia, we use the health index proposed by Javed. The health index construction is made in five steps after sensor data are acquired in packets of 10 seconds each. First, a wavelet transformation is done in each packet using fourth-order dial keys. In the second step, a trigonometric function is applied in the packet that will then be reduced using a statistical function, such as the standard deviation. The data are then smoothed using an exponential moving average. And finally, a cumulative sum is taken. This picture shows each step, starting from the raw data all the way to the constructed health index. For each of the three operating conditions of Pronostia platform, two trained datasets are provided. We use them to find the initial degradation model's parameters through the levenberg marquardt algorithm. We then use the parameters covariance matrix to define the parameters prior distributions to be used in the particle filter. We also set initial distributions for the measurement noise. We'll use the following metrics to compare the proposed degradation model with a state-of-the-art prognostics technique. The first two, namely mean absolute percentage error and root mean squared error, are related to the similarity between the time series predicted in the long term and the real health index. The third metric is called relative accuracy and was specifically developed to compare the remaining useful life predictions 
of different prognostics algorithms. It uses the estimated time that the long-term prediction needs to reach a predefined fault threshold and the true value of that time to give us a measure of how far our estimates are from the ground truth in terms of remaining useful life. We compare the proposed degradation model with a recent technique called IMMF. This technique was published in the IEEE Transactions on Industrial Electronics in 2019, and it uses particle filters in parallel in the interactive multiple model theory for prognostics in the same dataset. To make the experiment comparable to the one reported for the IMMF technique, we set both the time in which prognostics starts and the failure thresholds for each condition as the same values the authors of IMMF used. For these metrics, the proposed degradation model was able to get better results with low prediction errors and high relative accuracies for almost all the testing variants. The operating condition number two is the one where training and testing datasets have more differences between each other. This mismatch is the reason why IMMF showed worse performances in comparison with condition 1. However, the proposed approach achieved competitive results even in such situations, indicating the suitability of the proposed health index in this application. In order to evaluate the prognostics algorithm through time, the alpha lambda plot is used. The estimated remaining useful life is compared to its true value at each time step lambda until the fault occurrence. The desired result is that the predicted remaining useful life fall within the region defined by a constant alpha, also known as the accuracy cone. The figure shows the successive computation of remaining useful life for bearing condition 1, 3, where the accuracy count is computed for alpha equals to 20%. For each time instant in the x-axis, a prognostics routine is carried out to estimate the remaining useful life at this specific instant. It is important to note the predicted remaining useful life lies within the accuracy count at all times. To conclude, we presented a generic fractional polynomial to represent the nonlinear health index proposed by Javed. We used the Levenberg Mark Quadrat algorithm to estimate the initial values of the parameters along with their prior distributions. We combined the proposed degradation model with particle filtering to do prognostics in the Pronostia platform. The prognostics results were compared to a state-of-the-art technique, indicating its competitiveness in terms of two error metrics and an accuracy metric specifically tailored for prognostics. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, please refer to the discussion forum provided.